Welcome. This is the Analog Output Dual Quantizer, one of my newer modules. So what is a quantizer? Well, a quantizer, I kind of like to think of it as it's frets for a synthesizer. Okay, so if you've got a fretless string instrument, like this diddly bow, wherever you put your finger, makes a different note and you can slide up and down the string and you can get a continuous variety of different notes. Sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want to confine yourself to the notes of a scale. So that's where frets come in. On a fretted instrument like this ukulele, you got the frets to keep you on tune in the, in this case, equally tempered chromatic scale. Well, it's like that with a synthesizer quantizer. If you've got a control voltage that gives you a continuous varying pitch, you can take that control voltage and use it like that if you want to, or you can put it into a quantizer and it will confine the control voltage to the particular levels that correspond to the equally tempered scale or whatever scale you happen to be wanting this thing to quantize you to. So let's take a look at how this works. Okay, controlling an oscillator with a low frequency oscillation signal. Running up and down. Continuously. This is like a string instrument with no frets. Now we're going to put the frets in. And what do we get? We get this. Okay, so this is a dual quantizer. It's got two quantizers here, the top row and this pertain to one, the bottom row and this pertain to the other. We've got a control voltage input. We've actually got another control voltage input, and that's an offset. This one is the control voltage that's quantized. This is added to the result of the quantization. And this is normalized to 5 volts, and it's attenuated here, so with nothing plugged in, we can still just turn the knob to, to offset it. Now we also have an input that's labeled quantize. If nothing's plugged in, it's doing what it does here. If I plug this in, you can hear the quantization stops. This is a gate input. If I feed it a gate, Then as long as the gate is on, it's quantizing. When the gate turns off, it stops quantizing. Or we can use this toggle switch to manually turn quantization off, quantization on. Okay, now I've got something going into the trigger input and I've got random noise, white noise going in on the control voltage here. When you've got something plugged in on trigger, if there's no trigger present, it doesn't sample the input, it just holds the output at whatever it was. So it's just doing that. If I feed it a trigger, it samples the input and then holds that. Samples it and holds it. So this is a sample and hold, but it's a quantized sample and hold. It's quantizing the results to that scale. So we can turn on a clock here. 
and we get random notes from the equally tempered scale. Okay, why is it the equally tempered scale? Well, that's because we, what we've chosen here, but we have switches here that will allow you to change to different scales. This switch allows you to choose one of six banks of scales. This switch allows you to choose one of 12 scales within that bank. So this is bank one, scale one, which is a chromatic, equally tempered scale. But we can go to scale two, which is a major scale. Five other banks which gives you up to 72 possible scales which sounds like a lot but keep in mind that for instance what we've got here is a major scale but in particular it's C major or whatever this offset sets it to but it's some particular major scale sometimes you want to have other keys and so for instance in bank 2 you've got all the major scales from C major through C sharp, D, E flat, E, and so forth, all the way up to um, B major. So 12 different major scales, and then if we go to bank three, these are 12 different harmonic minor scales. Bank four is 12 different melodic minor scales. Bank five, 12 different pentatonic scales. Bank six, 12 different blues scales. So that uses things up. And we haven't even gotten into some of the more esoteric sorts of scales that you might be into. So really, banks two through five, each bank is one type of scale. And then within each type, you've got 12 different versions corresponding to 12 starting pitches for each scale. So that gives you five different types of scales. And for some people, maybe five types of scales are enough. For other people, maybe not. If you've ever investigated historical and experimental and various alternative tuning, there are about 150 gazillion scales out there. And if you have ever looked into the software package Scala, this is a software library that lets you work with various different tunings and scales. And Scala, if you download it, comes with a database of I'm not sure how many hundred different types of scales. So maybe you want to do something with some of these more unusual esoteric scales. Fortunately for you, you can very easily change one line in the software for this quantizer and that loads instead a different set of scales. The first bank is the same as what I just showed you, but the second bank has various tunings such as 
for instance, quarter comma mean tone, various well temperaments, Pythagorean tuning, just intonation, various different equal divisions of the octave from anywhere from one note to the octave, which means it just gives you octaves, to 24 notes to the octave, which means it gives you quarter tones and so forth. And if that's not good enough for you, well, you can always change the software yourself. It's relatively easy. It's set up to be relatively easy to put your own scales into the software. You can pull them out of the Scala database or you can define them in various ways based on periods and generators or equal divisions of the octaves or equal divisions of something other than octaves, things like that. All kinds of interesting experimental possibilities. But if you just want major and minor scales and chromatic scales, well, that's you just plug and play. So what's this thing like hardware-wise? What's going on? Well, let's take a look at it. Here is the module. It's This particular one is built in Cosmo format, 20 centimeters end to end. There's no particular reason you couldn't build this in Eurorack format. It would be kind of wide for a typical Eurorack module, but it would work. The printed circuit board here actually is something you might recognize. This is the, a, a, the most recent version of the DAC Eno board, which I made a video about a while ago. It's the general purpose board for interfacing gates and control voltages to an Arduino Nano and then the Nano can produce gates and control voltages using a uh, digital to analog converter chip. So this is just an application of that particular idea. And then as you can see there's a fairly extensive amount of wiring going on here. Well of course we've got 10 jacks here and if you look closely, you've also got some resistors soldered in here and so forth. There's a lot more resistors down here. These are the rotary switches, and you can see there's resistors soldered between each of the contacts on the rotary switches. So lots of resistors involved here. Toggle switches and pots are here. And that's that. So everything is handled in the software. Both quantizers are handled by the same script in the software. looks at the gates here and gets the uh, control voltage inputs here, puts out the control voltage outputs there, and everything else is software. So that's it. That's the analog output dual quantizer. And if you're interested in building one of these things yourself, you can. Everything you need to know is in a GitHub repository. Got the link down there in the description. There's uh, Gerber files if you want to upload them to a PCB fabrication place and get a Cosmo format front panel for yourself. If you want to do it in some other format like Eurorack or MOTM, MU, whatever, then you're on your own for making the front panel. But the print circuit board is the DAC Eno, which is in another GitHub repository, also mentioned down there. And you can, again, you can grab the Gerber files and upload them to a PCB fabrication place and get yourself a printed circuit board made. And then just get the parts, put it together. There's information about how to build this thing, um, information about how to connect up the miscellaneous wiring and resistors and so forth on the panel and you can have yourself a dual quantizer. And if you do that, uh, I'd be really happy to hear from you, see how it went and if you've got any suggestions and ideas for it. The software is of course also downloadable from the repository and go ahead, have fun with it. Meantime, Stay tuned to Analog Output for more. We've got uh, a backlog of a few modules I want to talk about, so I'm going to try to get a few videos out a little more frequently than I have lately. And so, you know, like and subscribe, all that. And I'll see you next time on Analog Output.